Conference. Let's speak with Adrian Ramsey, co-leader of the Green Party. Adrian, good afternoon to you. I'd imagine you would agree, at least with the sentiment of that last point, nothing's going to change until it's too late. Is that how it feels to you guys? Yeah, well, good afternoon, Ian. It's a worry, and people are right to be asking the questions about what is COP achieving, because... The United Nations has reminded us of the urgency that there's currently not a credible pathway to keeping global temperature rises within safe limits and the urgent transformation of our society and our economy is needed in order to achieve that. So yes, the question has to be what action is coming as a result of these talks and are the governments, including our own government, putting in place the policies needed at home to achieve the commitments they've made towards net zero. And at the moment, our government's policies are taking us in the wrong direction on this. And we need governments around the world to come together and review the policies that are needed urgently now to drive down carbon emissions and look at how we can do that in a way that tackles the cost of living crisis at the same time and creates all the economic op opportunities that can come alongside it. Just give us your sense on this. We, the, the other day when we were talking about this, Adrian, we went through a big old list of things uh, that have been done that we've done as citizens of the planet and residents of the United Kingdom over the last 20, 30 years, everything from how we get petrol now, now, from the, un the leaded world to the unleaded world, how nappies are made, what light bulbs do, electric cars, solar panels. I mean, how could it be that we're in a worse place now than we were 20 years ago? Well, that's a really good question. I remember growing up learning about all of these issues as a child, and it's yeah. what inspired me to get involved. Do you remember and the yes, ozone I... layer, Adrian? Remember when there was a hole in the ozone layer? We sorted yeah, that out by getting rid of that rubbish deodorant. We've had decades of politicians talking about it, of scientists warning about it, of Greens and communities campaigning on it, and yet the response has been woefully inadequate. And it's, it's unbelievable that so many of our government's policies are taking us still in the wrong direction. So yes, we've had some wins along the way, but what we need to do now is to take that opportunity for the urgent transformation. And if the Prime Minister means anything in the sort of nice words that he added in his speech. It's got to be followed through by the policy action. Where's the program to insulate our homes right across the country in ways that could keep people's fuel bills down and create jobs as well as cutting carbon emissions? But Where's the investment in public transport, the support for farmers to produce more of our food locally? And I'm sitting here in rural Suffolk where I've been talking to local businesses today who are really suffering from the cost of living crisis. And if we were supporting local businesses, local farmers, we could be creating economies that are far more resilient to these changes and really making improvements for our communities mm. at the same time as addressing the climate emergency. I think one of the things, perhaps, Adrian, and, and you can maybe shine some light on this, and this does roll around in my mind quite a bit, if some of the doomsday scenarios were, were, were real, um, and I'm thinking of the extremes of what... I don't know, Just Stop Oil and people like that tell us there are Green Party members that share some of those views as well. Surely there's no leader on the planet that would want to put their name to that. There's, there's no, whether it's Rishi Sunak, whether it's Mr Macron, Trudeau, Biden, whoever it happens to be, these guys aren't, they, they might be inept sometimes, but they're not entirely stupid. So well, why, mm. it would be in their own interest, surely, if things were that bad they would be doing something about it, which leads many people to extrapolate that, well, yeah, we can address things for the climate, of course we can, but no one's going to die. Well, the travesty is that people already are dying. If you look at the floods that we've seen in Pakistan this summer, the drought in East Africa, um, people are really suffering from this. In people used to die in much larger numbers, Adrian, as you know from climate-based um, events. Well, nobody wants to see the events that we've seen in places like Pakistan and East Africa this year become more common. And I think actually politicians have been briefed on the extent of the situation and they might in print that, you know, the, the ruling parties might in principle think action should be taken, but they've not been willing to stand up to the vested interests in the fossil fuel sector and elsewhere and say, no, we won't have any more oil and gas licenses. We won't go ahead with big scale road building and airport expansion. Instead, we'll put our focus on the alternatives of how we can 
significantly reduce energy use, invest in renewable energy, support our local economies, our public transport, our local farmers, the sorts of things that can be part of a really positive green future. They've just not been willing to do that, I think perhaps in the hope that they'll be found out some years later when the, the um, chickens come home to roost in terms of the climate emergency. But, but all of those leaders, people like Rishi Sunak and maybe not Biden, he's a, an older guy now, I say that not unkindly, just a, a matter of fact, but most of these guys in 10 years' time when we have gone past this apparent tipping point, our road to hell would be complete because we didn't take our foot off the accelerator, as the man from the UN told us. These guys are still going to be around, so we'll be able to interview mm. Rishi Sunak and say to him, you killed the planet. Well, yes, you know, Rishi Sunak has got children, as have I, and all of us who've got young people that we care about in, in our lives, you know, nearly all of us have got children or nieces or, or uh, you know, just young people we know in our community thinking about what the future is going to be like. But they've it's got kids as well, haven't they? They've got absolutely. kids. So, so does Rishi Sunak um, not care if he's poisoning his own grandchildren or that they're not born yet, but you take my point? Well, he said some of the right words, but that's not enough if the policies aren't following through as a result. And it's not just that he's not doing enough, he's actively still taking us in the wrong direction with some of the attacks on nature, the current policy that's still there for new oil and gas licenses. Now, if Rishi Sunak's about to tear up a lot of what his colleagues have done in recent months and take the government in the right direction, that's great. But we've certainly laid out what we want to see coming both from the COP agreements internationally and in terms of what our country's done. You know, he put in place that windfall tax on the oil and gas companies, which lots of us have been calling for, but he left in place a, a loophole where they could keep the money to invest it in new oil and gas exploration, which is the opposite of what that money should be being used for, which is the investment and development of new renewable forms of energy. That's where we need to put that investment. Just a final point, and many of our listeners have picked up on this as well, um, and, and I know mentioned in China and India and even North America as well, you know, it's a fairly well-worn path to go down in these kind of discussions, but it, there is an irredeemable reality here, Adrian, isn't there, that unless you tackle those countries, then nothing is going to significantly change. In fact, right now, you should be appearing on China state television saying these very things. Clearly, we need all countries in the world to play their role, and that's why the international negotiations are important. Equally, what I would point out, though, is any action we take in our country matters regardless. First of all, because we were one of the first countries to industrialise, so we have an opportunity and, I would say, a moral obligation okay. to show you the path and the opportunity into the new green industrial revolution of the future. But also, at the same time, every home that we insulate, every community that we help to get more of its food locally, every region that's got better public but, transport... But, of course, it would be argued... That, all... Yeah, no, I hear what you're saying, but it would be argued that without China and the others, it's all a fool's errand. I stop there, Adrian, for time.